A Black with A Black TV, and you watching this is Charlotte. Today, I'm here with my homegirl JE, or you might know as Jocelyn Ellis. Brief you on your mission. In the studio, you know where the artists stay. She's gonna tell us a little bit about herself. I'm originally from Durham, North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Our city. <laughs> How long you been in Charlotte? I've been here, I think going on like seven years. So being here for seven years, you know, what's your kind of take on the music scene when you first arrived and you know, maybe where it is right now? I think when I first arrived here in Charlotte, the music scene was still growing. It was still kind of in the baby stages. Um, I feel that now there's a lot more unity between the artists. Um, and now we're in the toddler stage, so we're walking. You know, uh, there's a lot more talent that are taking reins in terms of really getting their artistry out there. And there's a lot of talent out here that's driven. Um, and so I think that there's so much potential now in the market just for us to really pop the top off of it and uh, and grow into our, our adolescent and teenage years and really start banging on doors. It's so mean, mean to me. Gosh, that means that you have unconditional love for someone's spirit, for someone's aura. You have unconditional love for their imperfections. Uh, you support one another no matter what. And there's an unspoken loyalty that's beyond this life. That's what I think a soulmate is. And when you find that, that's, to me, soulmateism. <laughs> sure. Oh, well, I launched a campaign recently, like you said, on Indiegogo. Um, and it was basically a campaign to raise the remaining funds that I need to put out my first solo album. And it did really well, and really it was twofold. Uh, the purpose was to re-energize the community around art and to make our community more accountable to support the artists that are here, but also to make me accountable and say, hey, if you support my art, I'm going to make sure that I'm creative and that you know, I give you things back because you supported me. So, how's this album? You know, maybe different from the last project you put out. Wow, this album is like super conceptual. Okay. So there's a story behind it, a mixture of genres, and the fact that it's a conceptual album. So the whole the whole album is driven by a story, and, and it's gonna be great. The true self. The true self is being authentic to whatever is the makeup of your being. So that means that if in your heart, in your soul, in your gut, you are supposed to be a painter, then that's what you eat, that's what you speak, that's what you breathe, you know, that's what you meditate on. I mean, I feel like the, the true self is being authentic in a 360 manner. So that's just always being who you are no matter what situation and being true to all you speak to I speak to I speak to rebel souls with a purpose um, I feel that a lot of times when you talk about rebellion it kind of for some people it speaks chaos but I feel like you have a purpose in your rebellion and there's there's a target there's something that you're trying to change so I, I feel like I speak to those who want to see change in our environment, in our society, in our mentalities. Um, you know, I speak to positive thinkers, I speak to honest, you know, honest expressionalists, people who just put it out there like this is me, um, I'm at the mountaintop and I'm in the valley, you know, that those are the people that I speak to. I speak to the soul warriors. My crown, my hair is my crown. Uh, it is an emblem of dignity and I feel that just as you take care of your holistic temple, I think your energy shoots right out of your head. So, in a sense, you can use your hair as an artistic expression of the energy that's coming out of you. So, I try to be creative with my hair, and it's it's just a place for me to be free and be expressive, and also to claim my my dignity and my royalty. What makes a woman a queen? I really think. In my opinion, what makes a woman a queen is embracing and having full, unadulterated faith in the greatness within. Your songwriting, where do you derive most of the inspiration from? It'll come from a personal origin, and then I'll embellish. So if I see, you know, an old man sitting on the porch, 
you know, there'll be a fantastical story that comes, oh, he used to be a king, he had five wives, he lost it all and mm. reprise. You know, it just, I just like embellish sometimes. And then I've started to co-write with other people too, so that gives me so much inspiration, understanding other people's perspectives of how they approach a song. Your part, the lips. The lips, I think because I love words, I love watching words come out of people. And so they originate really from the lips. Or they don't originate, but I think they exit from the lips. So I love lips all day, every day. Well, he seems to wonder, you know, what was the inspiration behind that one? Gosh, uh, well initially I was pitching that song to Alicia Keys. So kind of just listening to, um, it was a particular song, I think on like her second or third album that inspired that idea okay. um, and so I was setting myself in a New York setting and just walking down the street and seeing all the people who were kind of left behind in society or forgotten or the people that you know we sort of passed by but those are the people that we need to reach out and give a hand to so that was kind of the inspiration behind that song. I mean, you're right, this is awesome because we don't we don't have as many media outlets and I, you know, I think too in this market, especially musically, we need more business support. Like great, great entertainment lawyers here. Because they have that in New York and Atlanta and LA, but we don't have that here. Or great management who can only take, can take us from beyond just being local and regional to like national. You know, traveling and going to New York and back, how do you feel that has benefited you as an artist as a whole? Well, I feel that you have to get out of your comfort zone. So me going to New York was uh, me getting out of the comfort zone of creativity and um, even environment. I think I love Charlotte, but sometimes you have to break away to see what you're not seeing in your in your home, you know? So it just pushed me create creatively and also the business connections up there. Um, it moves quick, it moves fast, and if you're talented, people will give you a chance. And it's good to then bring that experience back home and say yo this is the potential this is you know what i've learned in another in another market you know bring that knowledge back so. uh the broken stars yeah how new is it oh that's like fresh like within the last five days or so are you on the production too yeah it's still kind of like a rough a rough draft but you know, it's basically just talking. We all have scars, you know. Yeah. It's we all. It's all a journey. My mom always said like we all have a cross to bear, and I didn't understand that until like I got older. You know, we all have something that we have to deal with in this life, being an individual. Yeah, like your legacy to be. I wanted to speak love, unity, and to encourage people to channel the greatness within, because everyone has greatness inside of them and to exemplify that, and to never, ever give up on your dreams. Appreciate Once again, you. I'm A Black, watching A Black TV, and this is Charlotte, J-E. Yeah, <laughs> A Black. Peace out. Thank you, good, sir. <laughs> All right, thank you.